For the first time since Omicron emerged in late 2021, the World Health Organization has announced a new variant of concern. EG5, or the Iris variant for short, is now spreading in multiple countries. So we're going to talk about what we know so far in this video. And before we start, if you aren't already subscribed, please consider subscribing and supporting us by liking and sharing our videos. We'd really appreciate it. Wow. It helps others find this video and learn about the latest news updates. Thank you. All right, so first things first. What do we mean when we say that a variant is of concern? This refers to variants that have accumulated an unusual number of mutations compared to previous variants. Specifically, they are variants that scientists think might be more transmissible or cause more severe disease. For example, the Omicron variant was of concern because it had over 50 mutations from the original strain, including several in the spike protein which the virus uses to enter human cells. When a variant of concern emerges, the WHO convenes an emergency meeting of its technical advisory group on sarvis sooth virus evolution, TAGVE for short, which then makes recommendations about how to proceed. So how do we get here with this new variant? Well, the current dominant strain is XBB 1.5, subvariant of Omicron that became the dominant strain worldwide earlier this year after it caused massive waves of infection in China, India, and the United States. Like other Omicron subvariants, XBB 1.5 has largely been associated with mild disease. But EG5, or ARIS, is different. EG5 has 44 additional mutations compared to XBB. 1.5 and scientists believe these may make it more transmissible. So it was officially designated a variant of interest by the WHO on July 14th. But just two weeks later, on July 28th, EG5 was upgraded to a variant of concern due to evidence that it was doubling in number of cases every 7 to 10 days. And it's already been detected in 36 countries on four different continents. On August, the WHO Director General said that EG5 accounted for nearly half of all sequenced samples in some regions, indicating it's becoming dominant very quickly. For example, in New York, EG5 accounted for 54% of COVID cases in late July and now accounts for 70%. And in Australia, it went from 4% of cases at the beginning of July to over 50% by mid-August. Scientists in Japan recently estimated that EG5 was around 1.6 times more transmissible than XBB 1.5, and a separate study done in Denmark found that EG5 spread about 1.1 times faster than XBB 1.5, so it does seem to be more transmissible, but only slightly so. But another major concern with EG5 is that it may cause more severe disease. We mentioned earlier that it has 44 additional mutations compared to XBB 1.5, but most of those mutations are not in the spike protein. Instead, Many of them are in the MNN proteins. Ah. These proteins play important roles in viral replication and assembly. In particular, the M protein is involved in assembling the virus's envelope. If you recall from our video about how the virus works, the envelope is basically the virus's outer coating. It's full of spike proteins that help the virus attach to host cells, and it also protects the virus's genetic material. When the M protein doesn't fold properly, the virus can't assemble correctly, and that means it can't replicate and spread effectively. So the fact that there are so many mutations in the M protein could suggest that EG5 WO and cause as much disease as previous variants. After all, a virus that can't replicate efficiently will likely cause less severe illness. However, these mutations may also make the virus more stable, which could lead to longer lasting immunity against reinfection. More research is needed to determine whether the M protein mutations result in reduced virulence or increased stability. But there is another part of the virus that may explain why EG5 appears to be more transmissible. See, the virus has a special trick up its sleeve that allows it to dodge our immune defenses. Specifically, we're talking about something called antigenic shift. Antigenic shift is when viruses exchange genetic material with each other. With SARS-CoV-2, Antigenic shift occurs when the virus infects both the upper and lower respiratory tract at the same time. This happens when a person is co-infected with two different variants. The virus first infects the cells in your upper respiratory tract, like your nose and throat. Then it spreads to the lower respiratory tract, specifically the alveoli, like the tiny air sacs in your lungs where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. Normally, when a virus infects one of your cells, it hijacks the cell's machinery to replicate. 
but sometimes the hijacked cell recognizes that something isn't right and tries to fight back by triggering an immune response. That's how your body normally fights off infections. But if the virus manages to infect both the upper and lower respiratory tract at the same time, the hijacked cells in the lungs don't get enough time to trigger an immune response. This allows the virus to replicate without being detected, which means it can accumulate changes or mutations that normally wouldn't occur. Those changes can include swapping genes with another circulating variant. And when the virus eventually gets transmitted, all those changes can be passed along to the next host. And this is likely what happened with EG5. You see, EG5 has an insert in its spike protein that scientists believe came from the H3N2 strain of influenza. The H3N2 strain has been circulating for decades and causes seasonal flu. In 2021, the WHO reported a surge in influenza cases in Australia. Since the discovery of a 27 scientists have identified other variants containing parts of the H3N2 genome, and all of these variants, including EG5, belong to the Omicron lineage. So it seems like the influenza insert gives the virus a selective advantage, making it easier for the virus to evade our immune systems. This may be why EG5 is so transmissible. After all, the ability to evade our immune system would certainly help a virus spread more easily. Now while EG5 does seem to be more transmissible and may be able to evade our immune responses more easily, it doesn't appear to cause more severe disease. At least that's what the data suggests for now. Of the 131 people who were infected with EG5 in South Korea, none were hospitalized. On top of that, Wastewater surveillance data in New York City showed that hospitalizations did not increase after EG5 became dominant. It's still too early to draw conclusions based on hospitalizations, though, because most people with COVID are recovering at home. So we won't see a rise in hospitalizations for another two to three weeks. But wastewater surveillance isn't the only metric we can look at. We can also look at mortality, which is the number of deaths caused by the virus. The data here is even more reassuring. As of August 8th, there hadn't been any deaths associated with EG5 in New York City. While that may just be due to chance, it's more likely that EG5 doesn't cause more severe disease. If this is true, that would be good news because it would mean that we're recontinuing to see milder disease with newer variants. However, we have to remember that the vast majority of people in developed countries have immunity either from vaccination or infection. This means that we re unlikely to see the huge spikes in deaths that we saw in previous waves. For example, when Delta dominated in 2021, it caused a devastating wave of infection across unvaccinated populations in the U.S., resulting in over 100,000 deaths. At the time, Alpha was the dominant strain in the U.S. and had an RO value of 5.12. RO or r naught refers to how many people, on average, one person with the virus will infect. RO values can vary depending on the variant and the population it's circulating in. But a higher RO value generally means that the virus is more transmissible. Today the dominant strain is EG5 and its RO value is estimated to be 6.45. Even though EG5 is more transmissible than previous variants, our high levels of immunity in the US mean that we're unlikely to see over 100,000 deaths from this wave. So it looks like EG5 is highly transmissible but doesn't appear to cause more severe disease. But what should you take away from this? How should you protect yourself and others? Well, the good news is that the tools we currently have should work against EG5. Vaccines. Boosters and antiviral drugs should all be effective against EG5. Scientists continue to monitor the virus and are keeping tabs on how it evolves. But for now, Nothing in the data suggests that EG5 will be able to resist vaccines or antivirals. So get vaccinated, boosted, and take your antivirals if you need them. Those are still your best defenses against COVID. And don't forget to wash your hands, wear a mask in crowded areas, and stay home if you're sick. These tried and true public health measures haven't gone out of style. Hopefully this video answered some of your questions about the latest COVID variant. If it did, please hit the like button. If you have other questions, Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.